was uh, once again very welcome. Uh, those of you who joined later, uh, my name is Shahid and I've been working at Six since 2008. Timo Fokt is here, who's the guy who hired me for the at Six uh, nine years ago. Uh, I started with a master thesis here and continued with my PhD at Six and now working as a senior researcher in the networked and embedded systems group. And since January, I moved to the security lab as the head of security group. So today, it's it's, a, it's not a very typical presentation for me because I, in all previous presentations, I mostly talk about the research, what I do and so on. But this is a lab presentation where I will present what we do in the lab. So if I, if I miss something, we will, be, we will have more presentations coming and you have already listened to, uh, to Martin uh, on one of the works we do. So bear with me. Uh, one slide on rice, some people, uh, you, you have heard this for the first time, but different research institutes in Sweden, they have uh, joined and became something big, which is called RICE, Research Institutes of Sweden. Uh, people who are outside Sweden, uh, and if you're familiar with Fraunhofer, so it's a very similar thing here in Sweden. Uh, and uh, this is funded by Swedish government and uh, different research projects uh, in the EU and Swedish level. Uh, RICE 6 Security Lab, uh, it consists of 16 full-time researchers, uh, three affiliates, which makes it, I think, the biggest uh, research group in, in Sweden. Uh, uh, we are at two different locations. We are in the Stockholm, Shista, and then and, uh, down in the Lund. Almost equally on two different places. So uh, when it comes to science, we, we cover different cybersecurity topics. Being a, such a big group, uh, we, we focus on, uh, on, on different basic uh, cybersecurity uh, research problems, also applied in system security uh, as well. So some of the uh, keywords are here. Uh, if I go into more featured or focus areas where we have many activities going on in the lab, uh, it would fall in IoT in terms of things, which is, I think we, we, we have five projects uh, there and we are covering about six people in the lab are working and focusing on this area. And this is my, my own research area as well. I have my PhD in this, in this topic. Uh, the se second topic, which uh, uh, where we have, uh, I think uh, we have unique capability in, when it comes to research groups, is the 5G and cloud security. Uh, we, we are running three projects in these uh, two topics where they're kind of overlapping. Uh, and then we have platform security, where we, we, where we have uh, the focus areas are, are software security and formal verification, hypervisor. I'll come back to this. We also work uh, on privacy, both from the social science perspective and also from the technical perspective. We have a guy uh, who, who is a social scientist, an expert in new GDPRs, uh, new regulations. Uh, so he is... Uh, uh, mainly focusing on the social sciences side of, uh, of, uh, of privacy, and we have a European project going on on the, on the digital privacy or trust as well. And last but not least, like many other players, we, we are also interested in, and uh, currently we're running a, a self-funded uh, activity on, on blockchain, where we are mostly interested in blockchain for IoT, and we have a publication on this uh, under submission as well. Uh, and we have applied a, a couple of projects uh, around this blockchain as well. And we hope to start some serious uh, long-term activity on, on this topic as well. So uh, uh, I start with the IoT security. Uh, I've been showing this slide maybe now eight years uh, with new pictures. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, before, I really have to convince people that IoT security is very important. We have to work on this because threats are coming. But now I think the job is very easy. You have, you have seen the real threats such as Mirai in back in last year, uh, October, on the, on, the, on the DNS attack, which uh, resulted in many websites, uh, Amazon, Spotify, you name it, they were down for hours. And that was a real attack caused by the IoT. But that was not a real IoT, that was cameras. But now we, are, we have other billions of battery power devices and sensors and TVs and coming and the, the Situation doesn't look look very good, uh, and 
the main issue is that security is primarily ignored in all these deployments we have and it's considered as an add-on just to get an early, early market share. But after these attacks, I think the feeling is being developed uh, that it's not, a, not, not an add-on, uh, but it should be built into the design. Uh, and this is apparent from different funding, uh, funding bodies and funding agencies. They are also putting a lot of money in, in cybersecurity, uh, especially in Sweden. So uh, I, I dig deeper into some of the uh, work we are doing and have done uh, in this area. Uh, we have a project, uh, ongoing pro uh, project, uh, uh, CyberWe, which is a Celtic Plus uh, project, where we, we, we worked on, on uh, six is primarily working on the standardization of IoT security protocols. It's important that what we do should go to the standardization, have a cross-vendor interoperability and wider adaptability. So this project where six is mostly focusing on this, we have a presentation by Joran Selender later on who, who will enlighten us with much more detail on this topic. Uh, smart grid security is also something which we have started quite, quite early. I think this is the only maybe European project who's called FP7 uh, still running. The program has ended, but Segret is still going on and it's a FP7 project ending end of this year. So we have few more months to work on. And this is, uh, this is the, project on security in smart grids. Uh, Active is an EIT project, which is a very applied project where we are actually deploying and testing the solutions we had been working on on IoT security uh, together with uh, different partners, including uh, Ericsson uh, Research uh, and Ericsson Finland. And uh, last but not least, this is my personal research area, is uh, IoT security for very constrained devices. Uh, and uh, there are two projects on this, Seaboard Certificate Enrollment on in Billions of Things and Secure IoT. And, uh, and uh, you have listened to the Martin's presentation uh, on this topic before. Uh, so, uh, and SIX, together with Ericsson, is leading the IETF uh, standardization uh, on, on IoT security. Uh, and uh, Joran, will, Joran Selander from, from, from uh, uh, Ericsson uh, will present this work after me where we have built new, uh, very lightweight protocols, more customized for, for these uh, constrained devices. Uh, uh, one of the works which is uh, not covered in other presentations, uh, Joran might highlight, but it's uh, group communication in IoT. In IoT, there might be a number of use cases where different devices form a group and talk to each other, and security becomes a challenge there because you have to share the security among, um, among the groups. And in this, we, we primarily do the three things. First is that these devices should be able to talk to each other in a secure way. These, second, these devices should be boots, able to bootstrap and join the group and leave the group and what happens on the security. And, and last but not least is the actual key management protocol for a group, uh, for a very constrained uh, network consisting of battery powered IoT devices. Uh, uh, the work is not mainly focused on IoT devices, but it covers that uh, as well. Uh, we are all, I think, we don't miss a day without a cyber attack, li listening about cyber attacks. So uh, these are mostly nowadays denial of service uh, attacks. For focusing on the IoT side or the protocols which are used for IoT, uh, we, have, uh, we have done some work. Uh, Dr. Marco Tiloka is taking now the photographs. Uh, he is leading this, this work on, on de denial of service protection uh, and uh, we have identified some weaknesses in D D DTLS protocol that, could be, that can be exploited uh, and launch a DOS attack against uh, this. D for you who don't know, DTLS is a de facto uh, security protocols right now for IoT uh, kind of devices. And we, are, we, we also see that these devices can be flooded with different mess uh, messages, so how to protect that, that's yet another work. And last but not, not least, uh, uh, we, th th there's work on selective jamming. One, one jamming solution is you come up with a powerful transmitter and everything is jammed, then everyone, uh, everyone will notice, and this is denial of service. But if you, if you selectively jam such that it's not not noticeable, then it's a problem. So how to deal with that, uh, those kind of issues, we are working, uh, working on that, and we have uh, some uh, very strong scientific publication in this area. Uh, 
so this was about IoT. Uh, we will cover this topic in the next presentation as well. We have covered it in the, in the previous presentation. So I, I, as I said, uh, it would not be wrong to say that six uh, is, is among the strongest uh, group uh, in, uh, in IoT security in Europe. Uh, if you look at the number of publications, projects, ITF works, randomization work, uh, this is really we are, uh, something we are proud of. So the other uh, project which, where we, was, uh, we were involved quite early is the 5G security. Uh, it's called 5G Ensure project. This is a, a reference uh, project for, for 5G. Uh, very huge project where, where the goal was to develop a security architecture for 5G. Uh, and identify different use cases. For some people, 5G is everything, but this project is very specific to 3GPP, uh, though it, of, uh, of course, covers the IoT part and other use cases. It has developed uh, security enablers, test belts, and contribute, uh, contributes to the standards. Uh, if you have attended the last year, maybe secure, Security Day, there was a full-fledged presentation on this. Uh, so. This is uh, something which is not as a presentation covered. Maybe uh, Antonis will, the, the one of the presenter later will cover part of the work, uh, which is also now we are using in another project. So cloud security, are, which is related to the 5G security work we are doing, we kind of similar people are involved in these uh, two projects. Um, uh, the Christian German, who is the ex-head of the security group, this was his main area of research as well, uh, which is, uh, and uh, there we are. We have also made some really good progress. Uh, currently, we are running two projects on this. Pa password is, is a project where we focus on the privacy in cloud environments, so you don't need to trust the cloud provider. Uh, and uh, this current solution solutions are based on the cryptography, homomorphic encryption, and similar. And uh, the second project is Cola, which is cloud uh, orchestration at the level of applications. Uh, we have a full-fledged presentation on this later today uh, by Antonis, who, uh, who is our project partner in the Cola project. Uh, so this was about the three topic areas, which we, we think that we, we, we are really good at, and, uh, and uh, we have uh, skills that covers a span of uh, problems. But uh, another topic where we have uh, uh, been actually working, working quite early, back in 2010, we have started uh, this work as a PhD uh, student project, the platform security for embedded devices. Uh, and in this domain, uh, we are mostly focusing on separation. So uh, we, we are taking this work further now in number of proposals which are submitted. But one solution is that you, you go for more cryptographic solutions, like uh, I, I encrypt everything and process my queries on encrypted data and so on. The other solution is you isolate the resources, isolate the applications, create enclaves, something called enclaves, using uh, new technologies called SGX, uh, which is a set of APIs open up, uh, which Intel uh, has an uh, open and other vendors as well. Then you create a, a enclave or a secure environment in a device where you can run your application without trusting the provider. And we are extending this now to the cloud environment. So this was done for the, for the uh, single devices. So in a cloud environment, if you have this full-fledged uh, solution, it means that you can, for example, in typical cloud environment, there are three players. You as a user, you have some data, you have a service provider who is providing some sort of service, and third is the cloud provider. In most cloud uh, providers, or I, I would say all cloud pro public cloud providers today, you trust the cloud providers, which means they have nothing to do with the application and setting. You, for, uh, you, you are a user of Assume and Husqvarna, and they are hosting their system in some cloud, you have to trust the cloud as well uh, in the current setting. Of course, there are a number of uh, you know, work and, uh, and studies are there how to protect that and how to give you guarantees, but, but nothing is dig digitally guaranteed. It makes sure that you have a full-fledged liberty to run everything what you want, and at the same time, you don't need to trust the cloud provider. So this is a kind of solution which we, we have, uh, we are really interested in and working on right now, and is part of a couple of proposals, is to, 
to bring trust in public clouds. Or simply speaking, you can store, execute, run your data in public clouds without trusting the clouds uh, provider. So it's a very, very challenging problem. And that uh, resulted from the work we have been doing uh, uh, in this number of projects. Uh, 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 just an example, this is uh, something we are really proud of and Arish later today will we, we, we'll cover this topic in detail. Uh, in a, this is a typical, uh, in, in a typical IoT device, let's say in this case it's an ARM device, we, we, we have multiple interfaces, you could have a Wi-Fi or Ethernet interface and you have multiple application, guest applications running and uh, in a single device, if there is no segregation or isolation or separation, uh, of resources, then every application can access everything and each other code as well. So SIX has developed through uh, a, a project called Housebook and Prosper, something called uh, a hypervisor or SIX hypervisor. It's a very slim code. Uh, of course, someone argue that what if there is a bug in the hypervisor uh, itself as well, because it's a piece of code. Uh, then we, we have performed the formal analysis of the entire uh, the hypervisor. So now it is uh, the, 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 the solution where you, you can use one device and run multiple applications in, in, I would say, complete isolation is similar to having three devices running three applications and they cannot access each other. Uh, and this uh, six hypervisor, we are using it in a number of uh, projects. Uh, Currently, is being used in the segregate, the smart grid project for the smart meters, and how can we segregate or isolate resources on, on, the, on the smart meters? So, as I said before, Arish, uh, who is a senior uh, researcher uh, in, in in the security lab, uh, he will uh, give a talk on 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 this topic, or maybe more. I haven't seen the presentation, but I think uh, he will cover this. Another uh, topic, uh, I, uh, as I mentioned, uh, is the privacy. So we look both from the social scientist and the technical perspective. The, the previously I've shown you a past password project where we work on the cryptographic solutions for privacy. Uh, uh, but here this is a social science uh, work. Uh, until recently, privacy was not really pushed by, by industry. Fortunately or unfortunately, Google was not interested or not, no big player because they they have to use the data, you have to sell your data. But uh, fortunately, uh, uh, because of the new regulations that we call GDPR, General Data Protection Regulations, they have to do this. They have to protect your privacy if they are using your data. So I have a couple of slides on this work, uh, and this is also part of our uh, uh, couple of very important proposals we have submitted, and we'll continue some uh, fundamental research in this area as well. Uh, especially with a focus on IoT. So two-third IoT devices, they generate personal data. And if you look at the tools and techniques today for protection of uh, data, they are not applicable for or useful for IoT devices, even not in the bigger devices, uh, computer or mobile phone uh, class of devices. So for those who, uh, I, I, I hope every one of you has at least heard of GDPR, but uh, those who, who, <coughs> who don't know, it's a new regulation coming uh, May 2018, next year. And if you don't comply with this as a company or as a user of a data, uh, uh, a penalty up to 20 million or 4% of global uh, profit uh, will, be, will be charged. So uh, that's why privacy has become uh, an extremely important area with the, for, for the industry who we, uh, we, we talk to. So there are different uh, uh, things or nitty gritty details, but if you, if you go to a high level, there are five things in the GDPRs that you have to do, you must have to do, if you, if you want to avoid this, this, uh, this uh, penalty. One is right to be forgotten, it's named as now, right to be erasure, that you as an individual, when you give your data to a provider or a uh, third party, they should Batteries 
So uh, right to be uh, right to erasure or right to be forgotten is one of the toughest thing to implement uh, because uh, there is not a single one-to-one -one relationship. I send something to you and you use my data. There are a number of players who can see and use your data. So how you enforce this? That when you say delete my digital footprints and someone clicks a button and everything is deleted. So it's not challenging, but it's by law mandatory to do. You have to do something to make sure that when user asks for data deletion or data erasure, you should have a mechanism. Privacy by design, it's a fundamental right and principle. You should have, uh, there are different ways to, uh, okay, I should be quick. So there are different ways to do uh, uh, this, for example, to collect as little as needed, so absolute needed. Other ways which I have covered in other presentations, for example, you have a, if you are using a public cloud, it should be by default privacy preserved, which means the cloud provider has nothing to do with your data. It should not be able to see your data. So those fundamental research problems are part of this uh, as well. Consent is uh, one thing which is also mandatory and it, it's a bit hard in IoT devices when the, in fact you have no interfaces to, to ask for a consent. Uh, right to portability is another important, for example, you, you own a Volvo car and it collects your data and tomorrow you go and buy an Audi, and then there should be a mechanism that you ask Volvo Car to send my data to Audi in a secure way that no one else can see. Uh, and breach notification automatically built into the system that if there's a breach, it should be notified to the owner of the data somehow. And of course, the, 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 the people, uh, the, the organization who use uh, personal data, they should have a mechanism of, or process for risk and assessment management. Uh, as I said before, when a, uh, this is very challenging even in the systems we have today, but when it comes to IoT, this is extremely challenging, uh, challenging problem. Uh, and, and we are really interested in working on this and, and, and we, 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 we are somehow working. But we have, a, again, some uh, funding proposals under submission. If we get that, we will have a serious activity uh, in this domain. So uh, I will wrap up with, uh, this is a quick list. Uh, this is not everything that we, we are doing or want to do in the coming uh, years. Uh, but IoT security definitely will continue this work. Uh, and uh, we, 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 are, we have already built the basic protocols to offer a fully sustainable uh, and uh, secure uh, IoT systems, open source protocols, and as even a standardized document which will lead towards a public key infrastructure for battery powered IoT devi uh, devices. We, we, we are working extensively on access control mechanisms uh, where you can use a, a trusted third party, for example, OAuth protocol, or you can even skip the, the third party. Uh, uh, and, and if you have these solutions, we can offer a sustainable security, which means there will be mechanisms to, 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 to automate, uh, to update the firmware uh, using the strong security guarantees. DOS protection is definitely a topic for us uh, to continue because most, uh, Recent attacks are basically DOS attacks uh, using IoT system. Standardization work will definitely continue in the, in the IoT domain. Uh, and uh, as Martin mentioned, we are going towards the automotive industry now and try to apply what we have learned throughout these years uh, into uh, in vehicles, IoT devices, or uh, between humans and IoT devices, let's say your key and the car, which is very easy to hack now, but how to put this guarantees Key is an IoT device. Maybe car is an IoT device as well for some people, but we are mostly interested in, or, or, or I think the challenging problem is that what if it's a battery powered devices and you expect that it will run for up to five years on batteries and you want the strongest security guarantees as well. That makes it very challenging. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we are really interested in blockchain. We have in-house activity going on uh, both at the security lab and uh, also we have a, a blockchain innovation center at six which Babik Siddiqui is le uh, leading. So together with that center, we are really interested to do fundamental research in, the, in this topic. And we have, uh, technically speaking, we have the expertise. We have uh, cryptographers in the lab who can do or develop lightweight crypto for, for blockchains. We have privacy experts. So these are one of the, uh, some of the uh, basic problems that these blockchains, they have serious privacy issues. They are not, for example, we have a super wonderful presentation uh, by, by Manit this morning, but if I bring this to the end device, a, or a battery power device, it's a bit challenging to, to run. It will not run on my battery power device for 10 years or five years. So 
these are the challenging problems how the infrastructure architecture should look like what security light security protocols we can use there uh, we are very interested in that on the cloud side of course they will continue with the orchestration and slicing and industry 4.0 uh, uh, we, we we have activities under submission on these topics uh, and I mentioned GDPR and software security for IOT is another activity we have because if you have the best security communication protocols and everything and if you have a bug then uh, yeah, you are done so software security is, is very very important for IOT uh, very constrained devices as well and that's it this is a quick list or not a, a full list of partners but some highlighted partners where we we have ongoing activities going on Pardon me if your logo is not here. I, I did it uh, very quickly, but I hope you are there. This is, uh, I have two slides on what our, our, our partners say that. This is from the Ericsson. I'm very thankful to them uh, that they have recently written a blog on our IETF and uh, lightweight security protocols work. Uh, this is another uh, blog by, by Nexus. Uh, something in German, I think it's, it's positive, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, there is a blog on, on the seaboard seaboard project. And thank you very much. <laughs>